Good morning, all, <clears throat> and welcome to the basement. So, y'all got to know. I saw the I saw all the reports and stuff, the weather reports. I'm like, nah, I ain't going over to church tomorrow morning. <laughs> so, so I brought everything over here. Figured I'd hold up here. Now the only thing is, over there I've got bulbs that are out, and those long fluorescent ones always kind of freak me out so i gotta figure out which ones to go back in there so that's why my face looks so incredibly dark these lights are on those lights are not and those lights are the ones i need to shine light on me so forgive me for looking dark and spooky um in terms of piglets nothing doing i didn't hear anything from caleb I haven't talked to him yet this morning so i'll holler at him early but uh we're probably looking at if nothing starts by lunchtime we'll probably be inducing at some point today so get the process going it may not be till tomorrow before we actually end up with something but now gotta hold off we gotta gotta get her started so we'll give her we'll give her another couple hours and see what she does or they could all be laying there when he walks out one never knows it's one of the things i always appreciate about goats goats back in the day we were raising them um just very self-sufficient. Um, Ninety-five percent of the time, you'd walk out to the barn. Oh, look, we have more. And that was about it. So, pigs seem to be a different, a bit of a different deal. So, alrighty. Well, I got enough of you here. Let's get rolling. Y'all are up and at it this morning. Y'all must, y'all must be invigorated by the snow as much as I am. Like, I want to get up on snow days. So. Every, a lot of other folks want to sleep in. That's never been my jam on a snow day. So, plenty to do. But uh, we can set all that aside for a second as we dive into prayer this morning. And, uh, and oh yeah, also, before I forget, thank you so much for everybody who helped out this weekend. Belinda on Friday and Stephen Dot on Saturday. Really appreciate it. Wish uh, wish that it, the pigs would have come during, uh, during that time. But I appreciate you helping me out and uh, just making sure that everything was covered. So it is February the 1st. Welcome to February. We are on page 129 in the book entitled Common Prayer. We are also on commonprayer.net and on the Common Prayer app. And so, without further ado, I'm going to invite you, again, like we said yesterday, with the snow outside and the quiet that surrounds us, I invite you to join the quiet that nature already invites us to. And simply allow yourself to sort of be in the place where you are. Leave everything aside for a second. And let us ready ourselves to come into the presence of our Savior. Let us pray, saying, O Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. Let us begin our prayers with the way we ended our prayers yesterday with our colleagues of the week of January 31st. Living Jesus, whose presence on our daily road we often fail to see, Warm our hearts with fresh confidence in your word, so that, in making room for the stranger beside us, we find your hospitality awaiting us, and the reassurance of your presence to inspire us to tread the road again and to share the good news of your resurrection life. Amen. And our antiphon, we are happy to be your children, O Lord. Make us happier still 
to extend the table. We begin this fe these February readings with, uh, with admittedly my favorite psalm of them all, the first verses of Psalm chapter 1, specifically verses 1 through 3. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seat of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. Excuse me. And to our antiphon, we are happy to be your children, O Lord. Make us happier still to extend the table. Yet again, we're tasked with a uh, significant reading this morning. And so we are going to read the story of Isaac and Rebecca, or at least a portion of it, in Genesis chapter 24, specifically verses 1 through 27. Now Abraham was old, well advanced in years, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham said to his servant, the oldest of his household, who had charge of all that he had, Put your hand under my thigh that I, make, that I may make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth, that you will not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell, but will go to my country and to my kindred and take a wife for my son Isaac. The servant said to him, Perhaps the woman may not be willing to follow me to this land. Must I then take your son back to the land from which you came? Abraham said to him, See to it that you do not take my son back there. The Lord, the God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and from the land of my kindred, and who spoke to me and swore to me, to your offspring I will give this land, he will send his angel before you, and you shall take a wife for my son from there. But if the woman is not willing to follow you, then you will be free from this oath of mine. Only you must not take my son back there. So the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham his master and swore to him concerning this matter. Then the servant took ten of his master's camels and departed, taking all sorts of choice gifts from his master. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia to the city of Nahor. And he made the camels kneel down outside the city by the well of water at the time of evening, the time when women go out to draw water. And he said, O Lord, grant my master Abraham, God of my master Abraham, excuse me, please grant me success today and show steadfast love to my master Abraham. Behold, I am standing by the spring of water, and the daughters of the men of the city are coming out to draw water. Let the young woman to whom I shall say, Please let down your jar that I may drink. And who shall say, Drink, and I will water your camels. Let her be the one whom you have appointed for your servant Isaac. By this I shall know that you have shown steadfast love to my master. <clears throat> Before he had finished speaking, behold, Rebekah, who was born to Bethuel, the son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, came out with her water jar on her shoulder. The young woman was very attractive in appearance, a maiden whom no man had known. She went down to the spring and filled her jar and came up. Then the servant ran to meet her and said, Please give me a little water to drink from your jar. And she said, Drink, my lord. She quickly let down her jar upon her hand and gave him a drink. When she had finished giving him a drink, she said, I will draw water for your camels also, until they have finished drinking. 
So she quickly emptied her jar into the trough and ran again to the well to draw water, and she drew for all his camels. The man gazed at her in silence to learn whether the Lord had prospered his journey or not. When the camels had finished drinking, the man took a gold ring weighing a half shekel and two bracelets for her arms weighing ten gold shekels and said, Please tell me whose daughter you are. Is there room in your father's house for us to spend the night? She said to him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Milcah, whom she bore to Nahor. She added, We have plenty of both straw and fodder and room to spend the night. The man bowed his head and worshipped the Lord and said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who has not forsaken his steadfast love and his faithfulness toward my master. As for me, the Lord has led me in the way to the house of my master's kinsmen. This is the word of the Lord. <clears throat> we often tell the story of Abraham and God's covenant because we are so individualistically minded at times that we tell the story of one person rather than being aware that that one, that interaction is for a nation. And so it's not enough simply for God to say to Abraham, I'm going to make you a great nation. God has to continue that promise in perpetuity. There can't be a nation unless God also creates the way forward for other things to happen. And so the story of Isaac and ultimately the story of Isaac and Rebecca, uh, which is a, which is a beautiful and, and, and complex story all on its own, reminds us that the covenant God makes with Abraham, God has to keep to Isaac too. And here we have this story um, of all these, let's put it this way, happy coincidences that seem to show what God is doing. And so let us remember that uh, just because God says something to us individually, um, God's plans are always about us, the collective, and God will keep his promises to us. And our second reading comes from the Gospel according to St. John. I'll be reading in chapter 13, verses 1 through 20. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and that he was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments and, taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? And Jesus answered him, What I am doing you do not understand now but afterward you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. And Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no share of me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, The one who is bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who was to betray him. And that was why he said, not all of you are clean. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a, mass, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. I am not speaking of all you. I know whom I have chosen, but the scriptures will be fulfilled. He who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. I am telling you this now before it takes place, that when it does take place, you may believe that I am he. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever receives the one I send receives me, and whoever receives me, receives the one who sent me. This is the gospel of the Lord. And 
most assuredly we can hear those words of Jesus, which get read just about every Monday, Thursday. He says, you are not greater than your master. So if I'm your master, what makes us think we can get around the work of, quote unquote, washing one another's feet? And it's the, it's, that is the power that Jesus shows. Jesus acknowledges his power. He says, I am your Lord and teacher. He doesn't run away from that. He acknowledges the power that he has, but he applies it in such a way that it brings all of those who want to follow in his way to a different place where they think about that power in new ways. It's a remarkable story that is lived out in the life of Jesus. to our antiphon again. We are happy to be your children, O Lord. Make us happier still to extend the table. Today we read one of my, uh, one of my sort of secret uh, favorite saints, um, St. Saint Bridget of Ireland. Um, of course, love Ireland and love the stories of faith that come out of Ireland. And St. Bridget um, is a really important figure in that way. And so we read her words today, as, as she said. I would like the angels of heaven to be among us. I would like an abundance of peace. I would like full, the full, excuse me, I would like full vessels of charity. I would like rich treasures of mercy. I would like cheerfulness to preside over all. I would like Jesus to be present. we believe Jesus is present as uh, as we pray for those who are on our list this day and we have one addition and judging by the comments we have uh, we have one to take off and so we'll begin with the uh, one to take off um, I see Michelle's comment that uh, her mother Doris Bortner is doing very very well following her uh, pneumonia diagnosis um, and so we will take her off and celebrate with Doris and of course with Michelle also um, and we pray for continued good health and then this morning we received a, uh, a message, um, not entirely sure who this person is, who only identifies themselves as Kyle H., um, who simply just said that I'm in a tough situation and it's going to take a miracle for me to get out. Um, so with no more, uh, <coughs> excuse me, with no more uh, information than that, we can still uh, hold out our prayers for Kyle and be happy to do so. And so without further ado, let us pray. Father, we thank you that you came to build a church, that you came to build a people and not just a group of individuals, that your salvation is for all of us or it is for none of us. Because Lord, the weight of our own faith at times, to have to do this life of faith all by ourselves is too great a burden for us to bear. Lord, none of us makes it by ourselves. None of us gets through life. Whether in the context of faith or not, none of us gets through life all by ourselves. Lord, we need help. And we need to know that we are a part of something bigger than ourselves. And that is a message to which the church has called us time and time and time again. That you and we are the body of Christ. We all have our unique gifts and roles to contribute, sure, but at the end of the day, we are all one, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. And we thank you that the promises that we read to your people millennia ago, the promises that your son came, the things that your son taught us 2,000 years ago, Lord, still apply to us. We are not separated from these people. We are deeply and intimately a part of this single community that you are redeeming. And so, Lord, help us this day to exercise our particular calls, yes, because you care for us as individuals. But, Lord, let us never lose sight of what we work for together, the coming of the kingdom of God. And so we entrust ourselves to you this day 
and ask that you would build us and build each other for the building of your kingdom. Lord, because, Lord, sickness in body, mind, and spirit reminds us, Lord, that we are not yet home. And so we pray, trusting, Lord, not only that you will come to the aid of our loved ones, but that in their healing you will continue building your kingdom. And so we lift our friends up to you this day and ask that you would care for them. And we say thank you, especially um, for the good news of Doris Bordner. And we pray that, uh, Lord, she would have good news going forward. We thank you for bringing her through pneumonia. And then, Lord, we also lift up, uh, lift up this person, Kyle, Lord, and we say thank you for being entrusted um, with even just an inkling of his situation. And Lord, it, Lord, he feels um, feels isolated and uh, and without hope. Lord, we pray that Kyle would know that he is with hope, and that he has a community around him that will care for him. And so, Lord, be with Kyle this day. Be also with those whom we name before you now, I'm praying for Gail Gacharna. Bert Remmers, the family of Billy Barons, Julie Scher, Matt Cunningham, the family of Dennis Bitzel, Joanne Buell, the family of Beverly Dutterer, for Diane, Rob Rickle, Darlene Hayes, BJ and Sam, the family of Sherry Armstrong, Laura Hess, the family of Robert Cassily, the family of Jay Boyd, Easter Dorsey, Butch McCotter, LaRue's Newsbomb, and Helen McQuay. Bob Scott, Bruce Ludlow, Richard Lindsay, Artis Tully, Laurie Posey, Marsha Brown, and Donna Rill. For an unspoken request, Linda Mayo, Richard and Beatrice Hess. For Caitlin, Jennifer Ramsey, Jean Alexander, and Terry Shavius. Joe Zentgraf, Steve Moorhead, Richard and Deborah Hahn. An unspoken request, Margie Snyder, David Miller, Gene Snyder, Baby Lacey, Carolyn Yost, an unspoken request, Cart Denner, Karen Anderson, Savannah Price, Sandy Suit, Alan Showalter, Jeremy Dutterer, Ann Wilson, Brian Cunningham, Tom Cross, and Dave Cunningham. Hear all these prayers and their individual needs, O Lord. Let them know that we are praying. Let them know of your love and your mercy. We also ask that you would hear us as we pray for those, um, for those whose names and whose needs are known specifically to us. following in the way of our Savior, we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lord, help us to welcome every guest as if we were welcoming you, delighting in their presence and ready to learn what good news they bring to us. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen. Well, the, anti the uh, benediction rings a little funny today. Um, may the peace of the Lord Christ go, go with you wherever he may send you. Um, my prayer is that you are not sent far today um, to simply enjoy uh, a day where it is snowing and that's just what it's going to be. Um, and in that way, it's a reminder that, hey, things happen to us. Let us just take the moments that we have and enjoy them to make the most of them. And so I pray that, uh, that today you can find some rest, enjoy the snow a little bit. Um, please be safe if you do have to go out, and certainly as we try to clear off uh, walkways and cars and driveways and all those sorts of things. Um, but know, um, even in the midst of the cold outside, that you are loved 
We pray that brings some warmth on the inside. And so until we're able to gather tomorrow, have a good one, y'all. Peace and good.